I can't really see very well. Mm -hmm. Near the front. Um, this one's actually for your mother. Question um, for mom. As your children went through these paths in life that people thought they were crazy for doing, how did you handle it and handle it when people were talking to you about your kids and the roads they were going down? Uh, we took the, um, once they left home and once we sort of felt that we uh, set them on the right track to appreciate education and so on, we had to trust that they will be able to maneuver themselves out of whatever they took on, that they would be successful it, because, like I said, they put their heart into it. And uh, so we, uh, even though we often chewed our nails at home, Victor and I, and wondered, you know, how is this ever going to be and why did they do that and so forth. But overall, above all, we supported them in trying to work it through. And we never interfered as far as as what they took on. And it, it came through. It's good. <laughs> I have a funny addendum to that story. Um, when we were uh, doing the uh, dock space business in particular, and living in low-income housing in Toronto, and as uh, Dr. Canelli mentioned, living on craft dinner, Shane scratched out some rows in the uh, very poor lawn out back and we augmented our diet with uh, some carrots and lettuce which as farm kids in downtown Toronto didn't seem strange to us but our neighbors are con concerned. Anyhow, uh, I, a lot of other people were concerned too. Um, some pretty sophisticated types and investors and so on and we got lots of advice to just throw in the towel and so on. And um, it would have been easy because you could see when you came home for Christmas the concern in the parents' faces. Uh, so to your question, uh, and but they didn't they didn't ever say or, or you know knock us down or or do anything other than be supportive. So tying this up together with the perspective issue, uh, Shane and I finished a marathon of five four or five days, 40, 24 hours a day hunkered down in the lawyer's office on that um, transaction to sell dock space. So we all know now that was $811 million. We called uh, home and mom answered. And we said, mom, we sold the company. And she's like, you, there was relief. <laughs> like, well, but, but then, and then she checked herself and she said, well, is, is that a good thing? Like, is, it, is that okay for you guys? And we said, yeah, mom, it's great. Um, guess how much? We got. So, oh, I don't know. Well, it, it's really hard to see what you guys are doing and so on. And she said, uh, I said, well, guess. And she said, a million dollars. <laughs> he said, hire mom. <laughs> she said, oh, I don't know. You guys have worked so hard and you've sacrificed so much, and all your friends from law school are on these fancy jobs and so on. I hope you got. And she's like jumping up. I hope you got $5 million. <laughs> For someone who grew up when there were no, didn't have a vehicle, you know, went to school and you know, horse and buggy and all that, real, like legit. And, um, and has seen, you know, and all of our grandparents have those stories and, and great grandparents. Uh, this, you know, what happens in this moment, or in, in that case, the turn of the century, and, uh, what we hope to be able to do again, or what we hope that our kids and grandkids will be able to do or enjoy. When we, you know, I think she wouldn't say anything higher than 10 million because at that point it was just silly. So she threw dad on the phone. And dad, right, he's going to show me. So, ah, you got $20 million. <laughs> no, dad, higher. Dad, right, 100 million. <laughs> no, dad. At that point, the phone went silent. <laughs> It was just a, a funny moment, but it was absolutely an unconditional support in, at times when nobody was really sure why, whether we were even sane. And so I wish that 
for you as each of you start the, the, the top of a pyramid with a whole bunch of numbers underneath it, I, I wish that for you, your children, I guess, and grandchildren, uh, that they get those kinds of uh, lessons and support too. Thank you. This was uh, a more real last lecture, I think, after these uh, two, Mom and Tanya, join me on the stage, and uh, probably the last thing like this that we'll be doing ever. Say, uh, we, the rest of us all have other things that we have to finish up here on this mortal coil. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll do that and catch up with you later. Say hi to Dad <laughs> when the time comes. And uh, th thank you, everyone. I think uh, Kirsten. Just, just, just. Well, thank you, Evan, Tanya, and our plus mom, or plus one mom. Um, it definitely gave me some food for thought, and uh, I'm sure all of you as well, and, and some perspective. So on that note, uh, we will unlock the doors and allow you to lead the lecture. And uh, please do enjoy some hors d'oeuvres outside and some drinks and use this as an opportunity to maybe introduce yourself to someone you don't know in the room and, and uh, see what they have for life experiences. Thank you. As you're exiting, we'll have the rest of the clan join me up here. This is, this is Shane's kid, Chad, and my two, Alyssa and Annika, and Victoria, who's named after Dad, Vicky, Cole, uh, Shane's in this, uh, the front seat, Irene, my wife, is here, so Irene and I are uh, starting our own, hear me down, come on up, <laughs> and thank you, we'll meet the rest of everyone outside in the lobby. Hey guys, how do you think that went?